Brethren, our God is strength of Israel, the God of heaven and earth. The one that ruleth in the affairs of man. We appreciate you this evening. We give all the glory for everything you have done for us. For making us to see the first Bible study in the year. I set our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, just tarries. We believe we shall see the, the, the end of the year. Father, we, your word says we are true. I tell you, I together in, in your name. There you are in their midst. We believe and we know that God the Father is there. God the Son is there. And God the Holy Spirit is there. Tonight, we pray that you come and teach us your word. You speak to us in a way that we never had before. And you will help us to spend the whole of this year in you. In progress. In earth. In this spirituality. In holiness, in prayerfulness, in power, in glory. We pray, Lord, that the devil will not tamper with our lives, will not tamper with our ministry, will not tamper with our church. Thank you, Daddy. In just name we pray. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Say Amen. Tonight, I'm going straight to the world. I'll be talking to you this evening on you have dwelt long on this man. Again, I repeat the topic again. You have dwelt long on this man. And I want to open your Bible. Everybody should open their Bible. To so Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I read verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 6 to verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 6 to verse 8. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough on this man. From you, and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites and to the places nigh thereunto in the plain of the hills and in the vale and in the south and by the seaside to the land of the Canaanites and unto Nebalon unto the great river the river Ephrates verse 8 Behold, I have set the land before you go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob to give unto them and to their seed after them. Say Amen. Say Amen. Here we see God directly speaking to the children of Israel. And I could also hear him speaking the same thing to you and me tonight. You have dwelt long enough on this man. That's what God is speaking to. Anybody hearing me all over the world on the net. And you're a child of God. But he's saying you have dwelt long on this man saying. It's time to move on. It's time to move forward. God hates it when his children are stagnated on the same spot. In fact, this is the work of the enemy. God is a God of progress. God is a progressive God. Jesus said, My father walketh either too. And what? And I walk. Amen. On the other hand, Satan is the one that causes stagnation and retrogression. Retrogression is when you are moving backward. Stagnation is when you are on the same spot. God causes moving forward, why Satan causes stagnation and uh, retrogression. Whether you are retrogressing, you are retrogressing in your studies, you are retrogressing in your spiritual life, you are retrogressing in your marital life, you are retrogressing in your earth, you are retrogressing in any area of your life. That's the work of Satan. God is saying, again, you have dwelt long on this mountain. It's time to move up to the land of promise. I can't say amen. Say amen. Look at it again. It says, Ye have dwelt long enough on this mountain. Turn you and take your journey. Hallelujah. And go to the mount of Amorites. Amen. Say Amen. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. Which the Lord swear unto your father. Hmm. That's very loaded. Amen. I can hear God talking to us as a church and ministry tonight. You are, we have dwelt long on this mountain. It's time to multiply and win many souls. I can say amen. In your prayer life as a person, I can hear God. He's saying, you have dwelt long, you know, on, on praying for 30 minutes in a day. It's time you move on to hours of prayer daily. In your word life, God is saying, you have dwelt long on this mountain of reading just one to two chapters in a day. It's time to move on to reading many chapters. I can you say amen? In your life of holiness, God is saying, you have dwelt long on this mountain of falling and rising, of toying with little, little saints, which can destroy your soul. 
It's time to move on to sanctification and entire holiness. Say amen. In the area of your marital relationship, God is saying, you are dead long in the area of cat and mouse relationship with your spouse. It's time to move to deep relationship, love, and mutual respect. Amen. And if you are single, you are not married, and you are listening to me, and you desire to marry, God is saying, and you are dead long in the month of loneliness. This year, I will give you a marital partner. I can even say, Amen. And if you are jobless or you are underemployed, when a graduate begins to drive, uh, you know, a kabu kabu, that's underemployment. He said, God is saying in heaven, He said, This year, I will surprise you. You have got long, you have applied, you have got so many applications, nobody is answering you. This year, I will answer you. I can even say, Amen. You have a business. And uh, or if, or if you're a businessman uh, or you're a trader, God is saying that you have dwelt long enough on this matter of business stagnation, poor sales, little profits, or even losses. Let's move on to abundance. I can you say amen. If you are poor and needy, God is saying you have dwelt long on this mountain of scarcity, of looking towards you before you can eat. Come up to the mount of divine provision. I can you say amen. You are married. But you are yet to have a child and you are listening to me. God is saying you are dead long on this mountain of barrenness. God is saying let us move to abundant children. A great number of children. Say amen. You don't have to listen to me tonight. I will not stay long. God has a lot of goodies for his children this year. And but Satan is also planning many traps. But all the plans and traps of Satan will come to naught on you and me this year in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 7. Thus said the Lord God, it shall not stand, then that shall it come to pass. I bless you to you hearing me, everything Satan is planning concerning you this year, it shall not stand. Anything the devil is planning concerning you this year, it shall not stand, then that shall it come to pass. I can you say Amen. Come along with me to Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. God has a lot of good things for you. He has a lot of plans. No matter what the devil does, it will not stand. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. Let me read from verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am God. There is not else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from the ancient time, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my cancer shall stand. Hallelujah! My cancer shall what? Stand. And I will do all my pleasure. The cancer of God on our lives this year shall stand. The cancer of God on your life this year will stand. And God will do all this uh, pleasure. Hallelujah! Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil. They give you an expected end. Say amen. So this year, God is going to give you an expected end. God is going to give me an expected end. The Bible says that the desires of the righteous shall be granted. Hallelujah. You are dread long on this mountain, on the month of depression, on the mountain of uh, you know fear, on the mountain of doubt, on the mountain of lack of spirituality. On the mountain of ill air, maybe you are sick in your body. God is telling me to tell you that you have dwelt on there. This year, God will heal you. I can't even say amen. Say amen. Now, let's look at verse 7 of that discerning that we read. Hmm. Don't forget, it said you have dwelt longer in this mountain of verse 6. Verse 7. Turn you and take your journey and go in the mount of the Amorites and unto all the places, tribes. Amen. All the places, nigh thereunto, in the plain and in the hills, in, and in the valley and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. <laughs> Hallelujah. Notice that it was God that gave them the direction. It was God that told them to turn, and He told them exactly where He wants them to turn. Hallelujah. You need the event guidance and instruction this year if you want to succeed in every area of your life. You need divine leading. God must lead you at every step. That's where I'm coming to. 
Amen. The will of God is blessed. The problem why many of God's children are not blessed is because they are out of the will of God for their lives. You must key into the program, program of God for your life. You must know the mind of God for your life. You need to ask God before you take any action this year. If you want God to bless you. Say Amen. Say Amen. Hallelujah. Look at that verse 8. He says, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land with the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give unto them until they are still forever. I can perceive this what God is doing in our midst this year. I can perceive this what God is doing in our church. And I can perceive this what God is doing in the in the life of everyone hearing me on the net, on the phone, hearing it on the phone, anywhere they may be all over the world. I can say, Amen. He said, He has set the promised land before us. He said, I have sent the land before you. Go in and possess the land. You need to, you need faith to receive the promise of God this year. I need to go in by faith. Because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You need to walk by faith with God. You need to believe His word. You need to believe it when you have not seen it. You need to confess it and possess it. You need to receive it by faith. It's my prayer that this year, we shall move with God by faith. We shall walk with God by faith. We shall declare it and it shall be so in the name of Jesus. Say Amen. Those of you hearing me on, on, in your houses, on the phone, say Amen. Beloved, the second part of the of the message, what are the five to six keys that you used to unlock this thing this year? What is it? What are the five to six keys you used to unlock what God wants to do in your life, in my life this year? Uh, very brief. But six things you used to unlock it if you must receive it. If you will move to greater heights, if you leave the land of stagnation, if you leave, leave the mountain of retrogression, and you want to move to higher ground. Number one, prayer. Let somebody say prayer. Beloved, prayer is the key to moving with God and to receiving from Him all the goodness He has promised. You cannot joke with your prayer life this year. You need to greatly increase it. Hmm. Amen. Prayer is the, is the key. Let's see Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12. Then shall you call me, and you shall go out and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with what? All your heart. Verse 14. And I will be fond of you, said the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places which I have driven you, said the Lord. And I will bring you again to my, into this place where I cause you to be carried away captive. captive. Praise the Lord! That scripture will read. Say you will find him when you seek him with what? All your heart. He says, you shall seek him and find him. Hallelujah. He said, You shall call upon me and shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. That will be your experience this year in the name of Jesus. That will be my experience this year in the name of Jesus. So, beloved, if you want to move up this year, you cannot joke with the power of prayer. You need to increase your prayer. In fact, you need to multiply it. And you need to be alone with God in your personal altar. I'm not talking about you no know, family altar. You must have family altar, but you alone must pray as the husband. You alone must pray as the wife. You alone must pray as the son or daughter. You, your, your Christ must go unto heaven. Say amen. Don't forget, I said that on that the devil has plans for each person this year. But God will neutralize you when you begin to pray. Prayer is the only power with which will defeat the hand of Satan, which scatter his plans. We destroy his evil imagination. Hallelujah. Say Amen. And this prayer is the power we use in unlocking the blessings of heaven. It's the key to unlock the blessings God has given us in heaven. Yeah, amen. Prayer is the grace we use in moving forward. Despite all the position of the devil and his cohorts. Prayer is that grace. Don't joke with your prayer like this here. You'll be surprised what God will do with your life. Say Amen. I can you say Amen? Your prayer life must be red hot this year, and it must be it must be much. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man 
Avilet Mo, James chapter 5. Another translation says, The red hot prayer, the red hot prayer of a righteous man, Avilet Mo. Uh, I think it was David in Psalm 55, at that verse 12 or 13. He said, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray, O Lord, and I will cry aloud, and the Lord will hear me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray, O Lord, and I will cry out aloud. Don't be afraid to cry aloud to God this year. This is not the time of quiet time again. Satan is planning and plotting. But so cry aloud unto God, God will hear you in the name of Jesus. Say Amen. So I said, five to six things you will use to receive, to move up this year, to turn to your promised land, as God has said. I said number one, the gross prayer. Number two, divine guidance. Let somebody say divine guidance. Divine guidance. Come along with you to Psalm 32, verse 8. You open, your, you open your Bible to Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my own eye. I read it again. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my own eye. That's God speaking there. He said this here, He will instruct you. He wants to instruct you. Don't take any action behind him. Don't just go making decisions. He says, I will instruct you myself and teach you the way we shall go. And I will guide you to the point. May God guide you this year. May God guide me with his eyes this year. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, divine guidance is key. Amen. This year, if you want to make real progress. Notice, it was God that gave the children of Israel the direction they should turn to. They didn't just turn to anywhere. He told them, turn, turn, turn ye to the land of Amorites. That is exactly God will tell you. He said, you are very long on this mountain. You are parabolated enough. He said, turn ye to the right. Turn ye to the land of Amorites. Go this direction. Go that direction. If you want God to bless you, that's how you are supposed to follow him. To follow his instruction. Hallelujah. I can't even say amen. Listen to this. Something may look rosy, but it will not be God's will for your life. Just the people say, you know, not all that glitters is what? Is gold. A woman may look beautiful. That may not be your God, God's will for your life. A man may look handsome and rich. That may not be God's will for your life. Amen. A place, you want to, people that say they are jackpot. A place may look rosy. That may be a cap of the enemy to make you to pass life. It may be God's will for your life. You need to pray before you take any action. Don't just pack your load and go anywhere. Ask God before you move and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Number three thing you must do this year. If you will go higher, if you will make progress, is communion. Let's always say communion. Communion. Hallelujah. What is communion? Communion is the ability to speak to God and to hear from Him. I say it again. Communion is the ability to speak to God and to hear from Him. Many people, their prayer is monotonous. It's one way. They just speak. They don't even know whether God... They, know, they don't know the way God speaks to people. They don't even know whether God still speaks to people. And every day, by the grace of God, we hear from God. Praise the Lord! If you're a child of God and you're in the Spirit, God will be speaking to you. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Son of God, they are what? They are the sons of God. If the Spirit of God is leading you, you're a child of God. Say, Amen! Communion is very, very important if you want to make serious progress this year. Your prayer cannot be monotonous. It cannot be one way. You must develop the ability to hear God yourself. You must learn to speak to God and you must learn to hear from God. You must develop your spiritual ears, not physical ears. God does not speak to our spirit, uh, physical ears. He speaks to our inner man. You must develop your spiritual antenna. Many, many, many of God's children, their spiritual antenna is paralyzed. God is speaking but they are not here, hearing. The Bible says, once have you spoken, twice have I heard that all power belongs to whom? God. Hallelujah. You must know how God speaks. And you must know the way He speaks to you. Hallelujah. Say Amen. Number four thing you must have this year, if you have to uh, make definite progress from where you are to where God wants to be, is obedience. I can't even say obedience. I cannot hear you say obedience. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you be willing and obedient, you will eat what? The good of the land. Verse 19. Verse 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, you will be devoured to the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. 
is my prayer that you not rebel. Disobedience belongs to the children of Satan. You are supposed to obey God in everything. You are supposed to obey, obey every word of God that you are hearing. You are supposed to obey every word of God you are reading. You are supposed to obey your pastors. You are supposed to obey your parents. You are supposed to obey those that have rule over you. When you are becoming disobedient, Satan is controlling your life. And God cannot bless you. So, obedience is key in giving place this year. It's my prayer that you be obedient to God's word and the authorities in the name of Jesus. Say, Amen. Number 16 that you must practice this year, if you will move on with God and God will bless you, is holiness. Number 5, holiness. Holiness is very important because our God is a holy God. Our God hates sin in all ramifications. In the book of 1 Peter, he said, Be ye holy, for I am a holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. So, if you are toying with small, small sin this year, forget answer prayers. If you are toying with secret sin this year, forget promotion. If you are toying with small sin that nobody knows about, forget healing. Forget deliverance. Forget a provision. That will not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Psalm 66, verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Hmm. If I regard iniquity in my heart, no matter how much I know to pray, no matter how much speaking in tongues I do, no matter how much binding and loosing I do, no matter how much hallelujah I do, no matter how much songs of praise I sing, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It's my prayer that God will hear you. It's my prayer that God will continue to hear me. Iniquity, as I said last Sunday, is the block of God's glory. Iniquity will cover God's face. He will not be able to see you. Iniquity, the Bible says, iniquity shall be your ruin. It shall be your ruin in the name of Jesus. Iniquity is anybody's ruin. Don't forget what I share tonight. You have dwelt long on this mountain. You have dwelt long on this mountain. In your academics, you have dwelt long on the mountain. God wants you to gain admission. In your, in your academic, you have told us not long on this mountain. God wants to begin to excel in your, in your class. The Bible says God made, God made Daniel and his colleagues ten times better than, his, than their peers. Ten times better. Why are you not even catching up to your peers? Why are you behind? God said, you have very long on that mountain. This year, I want to promote you. Amen. In that ill end, sickness in your body, God said, you have very long on the mountain of sickness. He said, you should come up either. In that area of financial struggle, God is saying, you have very long there. I want to bring you out. I want to promote you. I want to take you to the promised land. In that marital problem, oh no man, no husband, no wife. I God said you have dread long there. I want to give you something new. This is a year of new things. And I've told you the thing, the seven six things you must do to climb to the to the mountain to turn land. I said number one, prayer. Rigorous prayer. I'm not summarizing. I said number two, divine guidance. Amen. I said number three, communion. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. You must commune with the Holy Spirit tonight, this night, this year. Many, many of us are wasting opportunities. The Holy Spirit is waiting for us to have communion with Him. We are not doing so. Amen. And then, number four, I told you obedience. Imagine when the God told the children of Israel to turn right, to, to leave the mountain and turn right. And turn the land. And if they refuse, what will happen? They will not be blessed. If they refuse, they will not be blessed. The Bible says, if you refuse and rebel, you shall perish. That will not be your, por- that will not be your portion. And then, of course, number five, I say holiness. Number six, which I forgot to add, is faith. You must move God by faith this year. Whether you see it or not, move on. God will do it. Whether it is apparent or not, move on. God will do it. Whether Satan is planning or plotting, move on. God will do it. This year, we are going to fight and we are going to win. This year, we are going to win all our battles. This year we shall conquer. This year we shall possess our possession. He said, Go and possess the land. And the Bible says, The poor Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their. We shall move in by faith, and we shall, we shall prevail. We will pray and we prevail. Confess, don't forget, as I told last Sunday, confession brings possession. You must learn to confess scripture to your problem, to your situation, to your circumstances. And this year, God will promote you. This year, God will promote me. This year, God will promote this church. He will promote this ministry. This year, God will promote those who are behind us on the net in the name of Jesus. You have dwelt long on this mountain. It is time to move. Can we stand up to begin to talk to God? 
talk to God about your life. Talk to God about your situation. Talk to God about the things you want to shift this year. Talk to God about the changes you need this year. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Talk to God about the demons you need this year. Talk to God about the things you need to conquer this year in your life. Talk to God about your prayer life, about your word life, about your life of holiness. Talk to God about life of obedience. Talk to God about communion. Talk to God that God of heaven will promote you. And talk to God about fiscal provision, about finances, about your marital life, about your situation, about the life of your children, about your parents, about your siblings. And God of heaven will, will bless you mightily this year in the name of Jesus. We believe you have been blessed by God, by this powerful message given by his servant, Reverend S.K. Oloyede. Make sure you listen to it over and over again and send it to your friends and contacts. It will revive you, give you victory in life, and prepare your soul for heaven. For prayer and counseling, you can contact the servant of God on 080-62-756753. Again, 080-62-756753. You can also visit us at Christ for All the World Evangelical Ministry. Number 13. Oje Kondo Street, Hof Libra Kitchen, at Bo Jua Ibadan. God bless you as you prepare for his coming.